Let's go to the next yeah. one. Um, Pagani, if you want to start us off, is the Eucharist versus Communion. I know a lot of people believe in the Holy Eucharist. And if you want to kind of explain what that is, we won't go long on this one because I know we're like, you know, 40 minutes in, we've got through one so far. But what would be the <laughs> difference between the Catholic version of communion, which they call the Eucharist, and right. for us, like a Protestant's version of communion? And why would their version be, in our opinion, heretical? Okay, I think Pastor Mike might be a little bit more. I really want him to go into this, but the issue is this. Symbolism versus transubstantiation, which means that in the catechism, um, there is a literal uh, changing of the body and blood of Jesus to become the actual body and blood of Jesus, as opposed to it, within Protestantism, um, we view it as symbolic in commemoration and in remembrance. But for the Catholic, um, there is what is called uh, transubstantiation, where it actually, for them, uh, and I'm not sure whether all of them adhere to it as it becoming the actual body and blood of Jesus, but throughout history and within Catholic uh, Catholic doctrine. Um, and not only that, during the Spanish Inquisition, there were millions and millions of people slaughtered who did not adhere to it. Um, and, and if they did not say and believe that it became the actual body of Jesus, they were burned at the stake um, as a heretic. But I like how Pastor Mike, um, in a couple of his videos, really kind of got into this. So Pastor Mike, go ahead, jump in, and then I'll piggyback off of you because you got a really good revelation on the Eucharist. Yeah, well, yeah, and, and listen, I appreciate you breaking that down. I mean, this is very explosive conversation. You know, you had mentioned the fact that that murder was a penalty for not agreeing. And so I understand, like, th this is in incredibly inflammatory. There's people who've been irritated and agitated the entire time. So again, we're trying to deal with this in the most compassionate way possible. You know, the Catholic, Catholics would say charitable. So the catechism reference for this is 1324 and 1327. And as Apostle Pagani already stated, basically Catholics believe in transubstantiation, where like the bread and wine actually become the body and blood of Christ. And so the Eucharist, as a result of that, is like a, is central to Catholic worship. And it's actually seen as like a representation of yep. Christ's sacrifice. Right. So, and I think the thing that is so, so offensive wrong. to Protestants is that, is that when we, when we believe that when Christ said it is finished, he meant it yes. is literally finished. So, so I think from a logical argumentation standpoint, if, if the Eucharist is a representation of Christ's sacrifice, we cannot crucify Christ again. Mm. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, if it actually becomes his body and actually becomes wow. his blood, then then you're saying that a priest who is a, a fallible human being has the, the ability because of apostolic succession to re-crucify Christ, to, to re-represent his sacrifice. And, you know... Again, it's I'm trying to say this in such a way that doesn't I don't wake up to being canceled because you know what you're seeing in the stadium event that just occurred in America is as the Eucharist comes out, I mean, it's almost like a false Holy Spirit mm. because they're saying, look, this is the because of the authority that the priest has to to actually carry out the 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 eucharist this is the body and blood of christ so it's as if the real jesus incarnate is walking through the stadium right now and mm. so i think for me what's at stake with the eucharist is is a couple of things um number one i think it's what actually happens is you're diminishing the role of the holy spirit who is Christ dwelling in the believer. And so it's like Eucharist now becomes this external versus the Holy Spirit being internal. Come and on. so what's gonna happen is when you have all of these, when you have a stadium event and Gen Z and the guy who plays is Jesus and Chosen who will remain nameless, you know, and they're all gathering together and they're walking this Eucharist out and everybody, oh, look, you know, what you're actually doing, I believe, and this again goes into the theme of idolatry, is you're training the masses to think that God is some external physically represented thing versus Pentecost, which is the Holy Spirit, God dwelling inside of me. And so I think that's a major thing. And so like when we, we're doing a stadium event October 26th, 
And, um, and the beauty of what we're going to do in worshiping is we don't need the objects. We don't need the physical representation because our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so we have Christ dwelling inside of us through the Holy Spirit. So I think that's a lot of what this is. And then, you know, there's two other layers without, you know, again, we're going long, but Luther believed in uh, something that was, and I'm giving the, the Cliff Notes version of this, but essentially something that's less than transubstantiation, but more than a symbol. And I do see that that, that belief is actually starting to rise in, in the Protestant church right now. And I think it's a great conversation Francis Chan and others are having right now. And then obviously, as Apostle Pagani said, there's the symbolism, which is, you know, and, and what people would point to is John chapter six, verse 51 through 58, Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 through 28. And, you know, for as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me, meaning, you know, from a purely Protestant perspective uh, of being symbolic that, hey, you know, as often as you break bread, remember my body was broken for you. As often as you drink, remember my blood. And it was more of a reminder for spiritual formation rather than a transubstantiation, meaning it becomes the blood and body of Christ. That's so good. Go ahead. Yes. And to piggyback a little bit off of what you're saying, you know, and my Catholic friends, if you're, if you're in the chat room, you know, um, Pastor Mike mentioned something about, you know, in the early uh, history of the catechism or when the catechism was first forming, there was a replacement, uh, replacement being done of the old gods now taking on Christian names. Let's just own it for what it is. The Eucharist is a representation of the sun god. There's no way around that one is a representation of the sun god, the IHS that you see under the Eucharist represents Isis, Horus, and Set, which is the Egyptian uh, demonic version of the Trinity. That's just the way that it is, you know? Um, and I just think that we just need to be bold enough to be able to say that. So go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I, well, yeah. well, no, I, let me, let me chime ahead. in on that because that was like a bomb drop. And I just, <laughs> I, this is like 20 seconds. For those of you who don't believe what he just said, I, I implore you, go to Italy and when you notice the Egyptian obelisks that are everywhere, and these are, these are not recreations, but original Egyptian obelisks, you know, the, the, the Catholic Church, it accumulated the artifacts of all the peoples that Rome had conquered. So there's an intermingling of all these things. So you might be like, oh, that's a stretch. That's conspiracy theorist stuff. And it's like, no, you go, I mean, the Vatican is filled with Egyptian objects absolutely filled with it. There was an intermingling of all this stuff and there was an adoption of it. And I just, I applaud you for being bold enough to say that. That's all I said. Yeah, the chat's definitely filling the bomb there. They're going off here. I just want to give one verse here, which makes it abundantly clear what communion is. And it's not transubstantiation where Jesus literally his blood and body appear there before the priest. It's uh, Luke twenty two nineteen, 19, and we're going to just go for the words of Jesus. It says he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying... This is the words of Jesus. This is my body. So he takes the bread and says, this is my body, which was given for you. Very important. Do this in remembrance of me. So he's saying, this is a remembrance. Do it in remembrance of me. This is not actually me. And when he was giving the disciples his drink my blood, eat my flesh, he wasn't literally saying, right now I pulled my flesh off, a piece of my flesh, and you guys are eating it. He was saying, this is symbolic for my body and for my blood. And then Paul says, when you do this, you're proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. But don't Come you on. guys think that if it was biblical, that it was literally his blood in his body, it would tell us later once he's gone that when you do this, Christ returns again? Because what you're saying is, if you're saying that when you do the Eucharist, Christ is appearing, his actual blood in his body, you keep, you're preaching that he's returning again and returning again and returning again and returning again. And every time you do Eucharist, He's returning again. He's coming back and dying again on the cross. And that is, and we'll, we don't really have time to go into this tonight, but that is why a lot of Catholics still have Jesus on the cross. Y'all, let's just wow. all come together and say, he's not on the cross anymore. It is not, he's no longer on a cross. I don't know why we have the necklace. You got, y'all have the necklaces of Jesus on a cross. He's not a baby mm -hmm. in a manger. He's not a broken man on a cross. He's alive. He's risen. He's coming back on a war horse. He's our high priest seated at the right hand of the father. It's not, it's mm -hmm. completely wrong, wow. which we won't even go into all the symbolism of the Catholic church, but to have Jesus on a cross, if you have a necklace of Jesus on a cross, get rid of it, get rid of it. And I mean, the de you guys got to realize that's where the devil wants him. The devil wants him on the cross. The story didn't end with him on the cross. He rose on the third yeah. day. So to me, 
it's demonic, the fact that y'all are still wearing necklaces with Jesus on a cross when he's not on a cross. The devil would want wow. him on the cross, but he got off the cross and rose on the third day. All right, I know we're, we're, getting, we're stirring it up tonight, but we're giving you guys, <laughs> we're giving you guys the truth.